What is biodiesel? How is it different from other alternative fuels? What do firefighters need to know about it? Biodiesel is an alternative fuel produced from plant oils, animal fats, or restaurant grease. It's used primarily as a transportation fuel in diesel engines, but also sometimes as a heating fuel in domestic and commercial boilers. Biodiesel can be used in any engine that uses regular petroleum diesel. It has the added characteristics of reducing gas emissions and toxic air pollutants, as well as being biodegradable. Also, biodiesel is adaptable to a variety of uses since it can be blended in many different concentrations. Production of biodiesel is increasing in the United States. Consumers use more than 62 billion gallons of diesel, and now more than 500 million gallons of biodiesel every year. As of September 2008, there were 176 commercial biodiesel production facilities running, and another 40 under construction or expansion. It doesn't necessarily take a large production plant to make biodiesel. Small quantities can be produced with minimal equipment for small business or even home-based use. Responders need to be aware of the possibility of encountering biodiesel production in residential fires. Traditional methods of firefighting against hydrocarbon Class B fires by using foam have been found to be effective against biodiesel fuels. Although due to the increasing widespread usage of alcohol-based alternative fuels, consideration should be given to converting to the AR family of foams, since it works just as well on biodiesel. As alternative fuel usage keeps growing, the scope of firefighting and spill cleanup efforts is extended to include potential incidents at production facilities, storage facilities, transportation facilities and routes, distribution centers, businesses, and even homes. It's important for firefighters to know that all alternative fuels are not the same. Biodiesel is very different from ethanol. Even though biodiesel and ethanol can both be produced from plants, like soybeans or corn, they have very different characteristics. Ethanol is made by combining alcohol with sugar and can be used in gasoline engines. Biodiesel, by contrast, is made by using alcohol to remove glycerin from fats or plant oils and can only be used in diesel engines. It's interesting to note that ethanol is miscible with water, while biodiesel is not miscible with water. This difference in characteristics will have an impact on how fires can be effectively fought and how spills can be effectively cleaned. In order to understand the nature of biodiesel blended fuels, emergency responders will need to understand the characteristics of hydrocarbons, like gasoline, and biodiesel, their differences, and how these types of products interact. Gasoline is a hydrocarbon produced from crude oil by fractional distillation. It is not considered a poison, but it does have harmful effects after long-term and high-level exposure that can lead to respiratory failure. Gasoline's greatest hazard is its flammability, even though it has a fairly narrow flammability range. Smoke from burning gasoline is black and has toxic components. Biodiesel is a liquid that varies in color, ranging from golden to dark brown, depending on the type of oil or fat used in production. However, it's most commonly seen as a pale golden liquid with a slight odor. It's insoluble with water, has a high boiling point, and low vapor pressure. The flash point of biodiesel is significantly higher than that of petroleum diesel, or gasoline. Biodiesel has a specific gravity between 0.86 and 0.90, which is less than water, and a vapor density in excess of one, making it heavier than air. Like gasoline, biodiesel is not considered to be a poison, but persons who work with it should wear respiratory protection. Smoke from burning biodiesel is dark and thick and releases carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, both of which are considered to be harmful. With its high flash point, biodiesel is considered to be less hazardous in terms of flammability. Biodiesel can be used alone or as a blended solution when mixed with traditional diesel fuel. Biodiesel blends are categorized by the percent of biodiesel in the mix, or the B factor. B100 is pure biodiesel. B20, the most common blend, contains 20% biodiesel, and so on. The mixing of biodiesel blended fuels can take place at a plant, 
splash mixed in the tanker trucks, or line mixed. No single method of blending biodiesel is any safer than another. Because biodiesel is rated as non-flammable, the higher percentage blend of biodiesel, the less flammable the mixture. It's important for responders to know the percentage of biodiesel in fires that they are fighting due to the converse relationship between biodiesel and flammability. Even though biodiesel is practically non-flammable in its natural state, it does burn vigorously once it catches fire, and its thick smoke is hazardous to respiratory systems. It's important for firefighters to understand the basic process by which biodiesel is produced. The feedstock, consisting of plant oils, animal fats, or restaurant grease, is heated and mixed with alcohol through the use of a chemical catalyst. This process thins and clarifies the oil enough to be usable in engines. When the mixture cools, it'll settle into layers, leaving the biodiesel at the top and the byproduct glycerin at the bottom. The greatest hazard associated with biodiesel production comes not from the biodiesel itself, but from the chemicals required to produce it. The most common type of alcohol used is methanol, which is converted to sodium methoxide through the addition of the catalyst. Methanol can cause liver damage, eye damage, brain damage, and several other symptoms. It's flammable, burns explosively, and can be absorbed through the skin. The most common catalysts used in the process are sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide, although sulfuric acid or hydrochloric acid may also be used. Biodiesel production facilities are generally regarded as refineries and must meet all the safety regulations associated with commercial properties. However, incidents will occur, and just like small home productions, an incident at a production facility will most likely be due not to the biodiesel itself, but to the alcohols and other materials used. When you look at a biodiesel plant, um, it's important to, to realize that biodiesel really isn't the biggest concern with respect to hazards of responding to an incident at a biodiesel plant. It's actually one of the safety, safest products that we have. It's actually the products that we use to create the biodiesel, like the methanol and the potassium hydroxide, that present the greatest risk factors. Responders must be ready to fight fires displaying a variety of characteristics, from polar solvent alcohol incidents to hydrocarbon diesel fuels. Depending on the situation, firefighters should be ready to use foam from the AR family of foams, dry chemical, CO2, and water fog. Gathering as much information about the product blend and chemicals involved will help responders mitigate the situation. The most important factor in successfully responding to a facility incident is pre-planning. Having meetings early and often to discuss your department's roles and planning for emergencies while considering the facility's expectations and capabilities is absolutely necessary. If there were to be an incident here and I had the opportunity to, to talk to the local firefighters and have them come in, I would want them to know everything about this plan. I would want them to know how many employees I had, where those employees were located, equipment, materials that I have on board, what I use in the process, where they're stored, what they're susceptible to, what their issues are, and got for a bit of fire, how to fight that fire, dependent upon where the fire is occurring. If fire is occurring at the biodiesel loadout, you treat it like biodiesel. If it's occurring at a methanol mix tank, you treat it like an alcohol fire. There are so many potential variables at a biodiesel plant that you really need to understand how the plant works. Fire departments should acquire floor plans, layouts, and as much information as they can about facilities in their area. Every facility will vary, but they will all contain these basic areas. An administration building with offices. Process building. This is where the materials are made into biodiesel. The process building will contain numerous hazardous materials, some in large quantity such as ethanol, corrosives such as methanol, hydrochloric acid, phosphoric acid, sodium or potassium hydroxide, and sodium methylate. Some facilities may use nitrogen to blanket flammable processes 
involving methanol, creating a potential low oxygen hazard. It's critical that you identify what hazardous materials, storage container types, and quantities are located at the facilities in your jurisdiction. Physical hazards may include high temperature liquids and steam, electrical, heights, mechanical, and permit required confined spaces. MCC rooms. The motor control center contains the electrical control for process functions such as mixer, pump, and conveyor in a facility. A typical facility will have two to four MCC rooms containing several banks of high voltage 480 volt buckets and often high voltage 600 volt transformers. Hazards of the MCC rooms include typical dangers of high voltage, electrical shock, and arc flash potentials. Tank farm and bulk storage. The tank farm area of a typical facility will contain six tanks ranging in capacity from 500 gallons to 1 million gallons. The fire department must be familiar with the types of storage tanks, products involved, capacity of storage tanks, and any spill or fire protection systems. It's common to have the following tank contents. Methanol, hydrochloric acid, phosphoric acid, sodium or potassium hydroxide, sodium methylate, biodiesel, and glycerin. Product loading, rail and highway. Here, rail car tanks and highway tank trucks are loaded with biodiesel and glycerin for shipment. This is also the area where the flammable and corrosive chemicals are delivered to the facility. Every facility has many safety designs and features built into the plant. Your local jurisdiction and or state may have specific codes and regulations for hazardous materials, fire, and life safety. The facility typically is engineered and designed following nationally recognized codes and standards along with insurance carrier requirements, even if the jurisdiction does not have adopted codes or standards. Every biodiesel company runs their operation differently. Uh, in the United States, there are hundreds of biodiesel facilities. All of them are pretty much different or unique from one another. Um, and without going out to your local, you can't read a book on biodiesel production and think that you're prepared to go out and, and, and respond to an incident because you're simply not gonna be that way. It's imperative that your fire department is aware of the specific systems being used in the facilities in your jurisdiction. Make sure that your pre-plan includes the following. Site maps and drawings. Hazardous materials list and MSDS. Tier 2 reports. Risk management plans. 24-hour emergency contact numbers. Any special training by employees in emergency response. Knowledge of any previous incidents fire suppression systems, water supply system. This is a sample of a pre-planned form. You'll need to understand your local and state fire codes that may pertain to the use and storage of flammable and corrosive materials. Remember, the safest, most effective way to deal with an incident is to plan ahead. Essentially, it comes down to get to know your, your, your biodiesel plant uh, and know everything about it if you want to be safe. Because, I mean, if you're going to respond to a fire, you want to be able to leave after you put the fire out. That's, you, want to be, you want to live another day and fight another fire. 